Hello, and welcome back to the Volume Vegan Cooking Channel. Today's recipe is a great alternative to a carb-heavy pasta bake. I'm using spaghetti squash, which looks a lot more intimidating than it is. Spaghetti squash is a very large squash, but the perfect conduit for a delicious bowl of food. It even includes its own bowl. Roasting the spaghetti squash cooks it through so that you can fill up the middle with your favorite bowl ingredients and then dig around in it with a fork to pull up strands of the squash with a fantastic bite to carry all of that flavor to your mouth. I am using it in the most predictable way as a substitute for spaghetti. I add in some favorite veggies along with pasta sauce and top it with vegan cheese to make a meal that I can absolutely stuff myself full with, guilt-free. Now, pull out a baking sheet and let's get started. Here we have the humble spaghetti squash. It's actually a little bit smaller than the ones that I normally get on this. This was purchased on a pickup order and unfortunately they didn't, they were very generous with what they picked for me. Basically, I just take the top off and then cut it right down the middle. And then you're going to scoop out the seeds. And by take out the seeds, I just mean take a spoon and just sort of scrape out the middle part without really getting into the flesh, just the seeds and the membrane that's holding the seeds in there. I totally should have mentioned that you should have preheated your oven to 350. <laughs> Your oven should be at 350. And let's take those spaghetti squash and we are going to put them on a cooking sheet. If you've watched my videos before, then you might notice that I use the silicone baking mat and you know, just to save oil, make cleanup a little bit easier. Things don't stick to my pans so much. And then I take a brush, like a basting brush, and I brush it around. There's a lot of moisture, of course, to the spaghetti squash, so it just sort of using the moisture and the oil combined to spread it around the bowl of the spaghetti squash, but also around the top, around that rim. It's going to be flipped over on that rim, but you want to put just a little bit of oil, keep it from sticking to whatever you're baking it on. Maybe use parchment paper if you don't have silicone baking sheets. And then once I've got them, you know, the oil dispersed on e each one of them, I do just a little salt and pepper on the top and then you're just going to flip those over so that they're face down and we're going to roast them. You're going to roast, it depends on the size of it, keep an eye on it. I usually go with a medium sized spaghetti squash or to a large one, 40 to 50 minutes. It needs to be in there to cook thoroughly. Around the 40 minute mark on a larger one, you want to maybe just pull it out of the oven, stick a fork in the bottom of it, and test how easily it goes through. If it punctures the bottom of the spaghetti squash, it's, it's done. It's time for it to come out. But these are small spaghetti squashes, so I'm only going to put them in for around 30 minutes. While the spaghetti squash is roasting, I go ahead and I've heated up my cast iron skillet on the stove. I've added just a teaspoon of grapeseed oil to the bottom of it, kind of switched it around, and then it added in some baby bella, portabella mushrooms. I am just gonna season those with some salt and pepper and let them break down just a little bit. There's a lot of moisture that you're gonna wanna get out of mushrooms when you when you cook those down. So. I, I always try to get them down a little bit before I add in other veggies like this zucchini. I'm added in, I've just sliced up some zucchini to add in with the mushrooms so that we have a nice filling for our little spaghetti squash pasta mock bake meal. <laughs> so yeah, just let that cook down. There's water in the zucchini as well, so you just want to want to let those cook down to get most of the moisture out and they're going to reduce in size and they're just going to be cooked down a little bit. I do leave a little bit of a bite in them, especially because they're going to go back into the oven once we stuff the spaghetti squashes with them. So just keep that in mind um, as you're cooking those. 
Then we're going to take our spaghetti squash out of the oven once it's all nice and roasted. This is what mine looks like now that it's finished. You can see how it's gotten browned on the edges. And I am going to start stuffing them by just lining the bottoms of them with some baby spinach leaves. I always try to get those greens in everywhere that I can. And now on top of those spinach leaves, I have added our sauteed mushroom and zucchini mixture. And then you're going to add a little marinara, a little spaghetti sauce on top. I am using, I believe that's the Classico roasted garlic variety. It's been my favorite for a long time, you guys. I, I, of course, I like to try things that are more organic or things that seem to be more for our people. <laughs> However, there's a certain amount of heartiness and spiciness that I like to have when it comes to my tomato sauce. I'm pretty picky about it. I don't like these watery, I don't like these sweet sauces. So they have to be bold. They have to have a lot of flavor to them. When I was younger, I used to buy the ragus or whatever, and then I would spice them up myself. Spent a lot of time adding herbs to it to try to make it something more like I was raised on. And I'm gonna tell you something, I'm not, I'm not of, of Italian heritage, you feel me? I'm not of Italian descent. That's not where my people came from. However, my father used to make this from scratch spaghetti sauce that just can't be matched. So I'm, I am, I'm very picky. It has to be bold and herby, and I, I don't really wanna have to fuss with it too much. I have tried to make my own pasta sauce in the last, definitely in the last eight years. And I can tell you right now that it is a lot of work and it's, it's expensive unless I, I suppose if you grow your own tomatoes or someone brings you a gigantic bushel of tomatoes because they grow them, then it's a great thing to do. I purchased a lot of tomatoes to make a giant pot of sauce and it was very, very expensive and it was a lot of work. So I do definitely do appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into it and I am someone who loves to cook and I love to make all of the elements of the recipe but I'm also someone who cooks two to three hours per day and I, I, I take shortcuts sometimes don't judge me or do it's fine if you do judge me in the comments below now here's something kind of shocking I once owned a vegan cheese company what am I doing right now? Well, these chow shreds are amazing. They are creamy and they're really good. And if there's one thing that I never got good at when I was making vegan cheese for sale was making block cheese that, sh that shredded well. People responded to my dips and spreads and things like that much more positively than they did when I tried to make solid cheeses, so. That being said, if I need a shred or something, I might buy something at the grocery store. I might, you know? I, I, it depends on how I'm feeling. These are good. The chow is good. I don't use that much. And it just gives you a little bit more of a, ah, what is it that you want? A little meltiness, a little brown on the top? Yeah. Field Roast, it's a good brand. And their, their sausages and their meat substitutes are great. They're not gluten-free, and that makes me very sad. And here you can see I have just you know, added some shreds to the tops of our stuffed spaghetti squash, and they are ready to go into the broiler. We are going to melt this cheese and brown this cheese on top of this dish before we enjoy it. And here are our freshly broiled <laughs> spaghetti squash and pasta bakes. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I had to make this meal in stages on this day. I had to work. So I, I made part of it in the morning and then put it all the stuff in the refrigerator, the mushrooms and the spaghetti squashes and, and everything into the refrigerator and then came back to stuff it all and broil it later on. What I didn't do was reheat the ingredients before putting it in under the broiler 
So the cheese shreds are not as melted as I would like for them to be here. Before I enjoy my spaghetti squash, I am going to just stick it in the microwave. If you're wondering why the volume of the fillings didn't go down in the stove, which they would because the spinach will cook down as it's, as it's heated, of course, and everything will kind of sink in a little bit. It just didn't get that hot in there. I was kind of surprised. I expected it to being this, you know, really hot broiler, and I left it in for quite a few minutes, but did not get very hot inside, so I definitely had to heat it up a little bit before consuming it. So I'm using a second vegan cheese. This is the Follow Your Heart dairy-free cheese, Parmesan style. When I was a kid, as much as I was into my father's pasta sauce, I was obsessed with that dehydrated craft Parmesan cheese that you could get on the pasta aisle. It's not refrigerated. <laughs> I loved it. I put it on everything, even things that were not Italian. And that's one of the things as a vegan that I actually do miss. There's very few flavors that I can't capture. There's very few textures and things that I can't replicate. That that was always an issue. I loved it so much. And while I had my vegan cheese company, I, I did develop a, a blend of nutritional yeast with sea salt and almonds that were processed together. It was it was really delicious, but it was not it was not close to the the Parmesan cheese that I remember as a child. It was just a good substitute. At some point, I just stopped even trying to substitute it. I think I just I would just shake on some nutritional yeast, I guess, until you know, just to get that sense of that being there. There's a shred that I can't remember the name of. It's really, really good. This though is. It's very close. It's very close to the dehydrated Kraft Parmesan cheese. It doesn't have the same texture. It's a little waxy because it's clearly a vegan cheese that's been obliterated to the point that it's just these teeny tiny little pieces that they've managed to keep separated. It's and it needs to be refrigerated. But it is, it's very good. It's very good. I like it a lot. I just discovered it in the last few weeks. My local Kroger started stocking it. And it's very, very good. I highly recommend it. Just a little sprinkle or just a, you know, a few teaspoons on top of something really adds something special. And then here is my dish. I put it in this little shallow rectangle bowl because it's it's messy. You can't just hold the spaghetti squash and eat out of it. It's it's going to fall apart. The bottom is, is you know, you can stick a fork through it, so it's not it's not a very stable eating apparatus, the spaghetti squash. But it's also, you know, kind of an awkward shape to put on a plate. You'll just kind of it'll slip around on the plate. So you kind of want to put it in some kind of bowl, and my other bowls are too small can't fit it in there so I have these works perfect and I have taken my finished spaghetti squash and I have covered it in green onions as I do some fresh basil from my my windowsill and some of that vegan parmesan cheese that I just showed you last but not least I know this isn't an eating channel I'm definitely not going to eat it on camera but I wanted to show you me kind of digging some of the spaghetti squash strands out of the side of the pasta bake so that you can see what it looks like. You know, I, I thought that these spaghetti squashes were going to be a little small and that, you know, maybe we would, we, we did have a side salad with it, but that we would definitely, you know, be reaching for some snack, you know, after dinner sooner than I thought. But it was actually very, very filling. And I think it was just right. I think I might go for smaller ones from now on. It was really, really delicious. And very it's a very simple weeknight meal. I, I really enjoy recipes where I can put one element, you know, in the oven. And while that's happening, start prepping and getting everything else going. It just feels very efficient to, to have, you know, your meal planned out so that something's constantly in motion. 
So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please you know, like and share it with your friends so that they can try it too. Give me a comment below if you plan on trying it or if you have tried it, if you've made any changes to it or variations that you'd like to share. I, I really enjoy uh, hearing about those. And yeah, subscribe and turn on those notifications while you're here so that you're going to always know when I put out new videos. I'm going to be doing some Thanksgiving recipes of over the weekend that you guys can use for your upcoming Thanksgiving meal planning. And thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> so as always, you know, have a great week. Eat deliciously, and I'll be back very, very soon with another great recipe video for you. Bye-bye.